Hello, I'm Jonathan Burnham, aka Kalos. Today, I'm going to bring you a tune for the KTM Crossbow. I wanted to bring this one before I put my tuning guide out because this is a bit of a unique car and how bad the default tune is and really how much you can get out of it. It might actually be one of the better cars in the GT class. So, I'm going to show you, as you just saw, 3.2 seconds a lap off my Road America time. I'm going to show you my tune, and then we're going to go through some laps, not just at Road America, but also at Silverstone and Spa and Watkins Glen. And I'm going to show you the times I was getting there. Uh, major improvement in this car. It goes from being one of the absolute worst to one of the best cars. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, here we are at Road America. Uh, this is already a pre-tuned car that I'd tuned beforehand that was way better in default tune. So without further ado, let's get into the actual tune. Let's make sure I'm... All right. We will go under car and we will go under tune. So you can see what I have. So my tire pressures are up a little bit. Uh, one of the things I do after a part of my fine tuning process is I actually, the last, one of the last things I do is do the camber and the tires. And one of the reasons for that is I'm actually trying to get not just maximum traction, because I find you could get some weird cambers that give you fast times with no tire wear. But what this really does is it evens out the amount of tire wear. So I'm not having a soft spot, a low temperature spot in the middle or on the sides, get relatively even going through the corners, it improves tire wear uh, pretty significantly. So that, I have 30.5 on the front, and on the rear, 31.0. On the final drive, or the gears, I haven't really changed those. I find that the KTM has pretty good gears. Uh, you actually want to shift at about 7,100 RPMs. If you shift up before that, like at the red line, uh, you'll actually be down a little bit on power. Some cars you shift early, to some cars you shift late. This one you shift late. Uh, alignment, one of the first things I do is I start at 1.5 in the front and 1.0 on the rear for camber and 0, 0 for toe. And then I'll start at 7 caster for angle. You can see I came down from 7 to about 6.5 on this. And no matter what I did, I could not get any of the all the understeer out of this car so for a little bit of help on my cornering i added two to the front toe uh, my cambers ended up being 1.4 and for an ideal rear was 0.7 but then it stabilized the rear too much so i dropped it to 0.5 that does lead to a little bit of rear tire wear so you got to understand if you run this in multiplayer the rears will tend to wear out slightly faster than the fronts. You might end up wanting to raise that up to, or lower that down to negative 0.7. Won't be as quick, a little harder to turn, but it'll end up help, helping the tire wear some. Uh, this is where you start seeing the crazy stuff. 15 in the front, 35 in the rear. I usually start out like 40-40 on the stiffness for the anti-roll bars. Uh, this car did not like. Being at 40, oh, I dropped it down a bit. But to get rid of the mechanical understeer, I kept dropping the front more and more and more and more. So we're at 15 on the front, 35 on the rear. Uh, you might want to go a little softer on some tracks like Mid Ohio and uh, VIR. I did run a multiplayer race at VIR with this car, with this tune, and it did okay. It's pretty stable, but I think you might want to go down on tracks like that. Uh, stiffer anti-roll bars can lead to uh, the car getting unsettled. I find it easier to control at point, goes more towards where I point, but too stiff and the last time to get, get unsettled with tracks, I have a bunch of hilly tracks. Uh, springs, I did drop the springs a little bit and I raised the ride height. Uh, just give me a little bit more leeway on the suspension. Uh, damping, uh, drop the rear. I'm not a big, big on damping, but I did find dropping the bump stiffness, uh, helped with the, 
helped with the curbs, especially like the rumble strips at Road America, and then just raised the rebound stiffness a bit, uh, kind of increase that front and side to side uh, weight transfer. Uh, this is something I don't normally touch, but I needed to touch it a little bit on this car. So I lowered the front uh, roll center. This is to give it more, as you can see, it says makes it stiffer if you go up, creasing understeer. Again, I'm desperately trying to get a little bit of oversteer out of this car. So I lowered that, raised the rear to cause uh, oversteer at the rear. I'm not, I don't remember if I touched the geometry or not. This is the big one. Uh, this looks bizarre, but then look at the numbers. 276 on the front, 503 on the rear. This car is way too much downforce at the rear. And the only way I could get it to turn through high-speed corners is to max out the front and lower the rear all the way. Uh, you can't raise the rear ride height to like ACC to gain aero balance. Otherwise, this car might be pretty beastly with the amount, just the amount of downforce you can get at the rear. Just, wow, that's pretty much, not many of the GT cars can match that. So it, got, it has a lot of downforce at the rear. However, it is still understeery and extremely stable at high speed. Very controllable through high speed corners like this. Uh, doesn't give it a lot of wiggle room. If you're a tuner who can maybe get it to rotate at high speed with higher downforce, maybe with some damper black magic. This could be, this car could be one of the best. Brakes, I did lower from 50 to 49 just to give me a little bit more turnover or, or uh, turn in on as I'm coming off the brakes for trail braking. I leave the brake pressure at 100 acceleration it was another one that was pretty about in the 50s i brought it up to 75 i found going much higher than that with this car it gets a little too squirrely on throttle but maybe you might have some luck uh deceleration it was super stable i'm pretty sure i dropped that from like 17 or 16 just to give it more turned in i find at 12 it's still really stable uh on on your coasting uh, if you want to see my force feedback scale, I did raise it a little bit on this car and my steering lock. I am running at 80. So in degrees of rotation, uh, 900 is what I usually run for Forza. 80 would be 720. So that's my steering lock for this car. And that with that, that is my tune. You are, I will share this tune. You can download it or you can just copy my settings and make it your own and controller disconnected. All right, we got it. We got gotcha. you. All right, with that, let's get on to the track. All right, here we are at Road America. This is where I actually tuned this car. Um, I felt really I was just trying to see what I could get out of it because it was such a bad car to begin with. I think 2077 is what you saw from the very start of the video, and it just understeered everywhere. Couldn't get it to turn in on the slow corners. I had it bleed off a bunch of speed, brake early, and just, and it was late on the throttle. And then the high speed corners, oh, if I tried to take them with any sort of speed, and the kink was an absolute disaster. So absolutely everything that went into this tune was taken out as much understeer as possible without making the car fully unstable. And I think I ended up in a pretty good spot here. It really does, turn in okay uh hold speed through the corners and stay stable you can really kind of push the car i wasn't able to really fully take advantage of the full amount of downforce which even at the kink you can theoretically take the kink that's coming up here at full throttle at uh without lifting but it is very tough in this car and it's really risky so on this lap, which, wow, was faster than I could do with the Audi, at least the, the base Audi, just a light lift, and I had like 155 miles an hour on the exit speed. Uh, I have done a tune for the Audi here, uh, very tricky to drive. I was able to get like a 204 flat, 
but this is probably the best time I've gotten with any of the GT cars outside of the Audi. I got close to this with the uh, Ford. I've gotten close to this with the Ford GT LM. I think I've done a 2045, but yeah, this this was really, uh, uh, the lap surprised me. I did not think I'd get 3.2 seconds plus out of this car a lap. I was pretty impressed. All right, here we at, are at Silverstone. The best lap I've ever done at Silverstone, I what, believe was in multiplayer. I think I ran a two minute point nine in the Ford GT LM. So I know low 201s is good. And initially I kind of struggled with this car on this track. Again, just the under fighting understeer at various points. But as I kind of got a feel for like how to take these tight corners, this car is really controllable on the throttle and on the brake you just got to get used to it and once i did i started breaking into the 201s pretty consistently and at this point i'm just trying to get a nice clean lap um i already did a 201 735 i'm giving it like one more shot just to see what i can get out of it and uh yeah i ended up beating it you can see i'm a tenth and a half uh up at this point uh, it did surprise me. I was hoping to get more out of this car, but then again, this is pretty good. Again, it's super stable through maggots and beckets here. It really is. It's pretty, once you get used to it, it's pretty easy to drive through there without really losing control. Take stow like a champ too, very consistent. I'd say Abby at the at the start of the lap is probably the one of the harder uh, turns to get right in this car. And cops too. It goes through here really well. You gotta be careful on the brakes. If you go hundred percent on the brakes without being fully uh, straight it will lock up and even then sometimes locked up but as we cross the line you can see i did a 201.419491 so basically 201 and a half again a solid lap and i did not change anything for this track all right we're at spa i was actually curious how this car would perform in spa i figured with the understeer that uh, Rouge and Radion could be a problem, Lanchemont could be a problem. Some of those like kind of high downforce corners would be a problem. It actually did really well. The stability of the car actually really helped. Uh, Eau Rouge is a bit of a struggle. You have to really lift off to get aimed up the hill and then hammer the throttle. But once you get it down, you can go through there pretty fast. Now, as you see, my best lap here is a 219.463. I was struggling a little bit while pushing it to get a clean lap. So that's not actually the lap, clean lap time you're gonna see here. But I do believe 219, low 219s are very possible with this car and this build. But I got a little slower here with a clean lap and that's what I'm showing you here is my clean lap. It's interesting, this this uh, build and this tune through that corner really kind of rattles a bit. Other than that, I didn't have that problem on the other corners. All right, coming down here, down the hill, on this turn, you do need to get turned in. You'll go wide if you're not careful, and then you can struggle with the understeer on exit. You can see I'm really pushing the wheel over, trying to make sure I don't go out. out. Uh, down here, definitely use the curbs to help you rotate the car. Uh, this car handles it well, and it helps you not understeer off the track. Drop down the second here. I Usually, I like to maybe uh, go low, but I couldn't get the car turned in and had to do a lift here to get through this corner. 
Uh, coming up on Blanchemont, you do need to be careful with your corner entry. You need to make sure you get turned in soon enough because if you don't, and I had this issue on a couple laps, you will go wide. If you don't get it turned in right to the apex of the corner, you'll, you'll go right out to the, the width of the track. Other than that, this was a really great lap around spa for me and definitely the fastest I've done here so far. Alright, the last track I'm going to show you is Watkins Glen. I know I've done a 144.9 in the Ford GTLM in a race, multiplayer race. So I want to see how close to 145 I can get with this car. Uh, it took a little bit of getting used to it, used to this car, and how, how to get the right turn in. But after I got it, yeah, I got pretty close. You can see my last lap here was a 145.561. So I already know six tenths off of what I'm potentially capable of in my normal car. I know I'm doing pretty well here. You can go pretty late with this car into into the bus stop. I didn't, probably didn't take the bus stop nearly as quickly as I could have. I'm looking for that stand over there. Once I see it at a certain point, when I hammer the gas. I go past that little uh, thing on the right, and I go late into the braking and then turn it back in. I'm trying to straight line out as much as I can. So, at this point, I've gone through four tracks, and this car has performed pretty admirably in this tune at all of them. Now, I probably could get more out of this car if I did some extra tuning to just get for the that specific track. But because of how limited I am on the arrow I can do, that I pretty much need that full front arrow and low, low as I can go rear arrow. It doesn't give me a lot of playroom with the, with the arrow. I did do a uh, race at VIR with this car and I got a 227.2 qualified second. I did get an off track here so this isn't a fully clean lap but I felt you know I, I had done this last section better than that so I felt you know what this is the lap I'll show you. I feel that 40 145 threes a pretty pretty expectable lap on this even with that little bit at the end. And with that uh, just one last thing of note, I have done a 227 with this car at VIR, even though I think that car needs to be tuned to be more stable because VIR is just a crazy track.